Hello guys and welcome again. In this video we will try to solve the Codility lesson number four. Question max counters. So if you are here, I suppose you already read the problem description at the Codility website. In brief, we are given an array of numbers and an integer n with a certain value and we must count the numbers of occurrences for every number in the array. For example, here we are provided this array with numbers 3, 4, 4, 6, 1, 4, and 4, and a maximum value n equal to 5. What I'm going to do is I will start reading the array, each value at a time, and every time I will encounter a number, I will increment its counter by 1. So, for example, the first number here is equal to 3, therefore I will increment the counter of number 3 by 1, and then I have the number 4 twice, so I'm going to add 2 to the counter of number 4. Then I will encounter number 6. However, number 6 is higher than n equal 5, which is outside of the boundaries of my range. So in this case, I have to increment all the other counters or all the other numbers in order to match the highest counter, which is uh, equal to 2 here. It's the counter for number 4. Therefore, I will add 2 to the counter of number 1. Then I'm going to add 2 to the counter of number 2, then 1 to the number 3, and so on, until all the counters, as you can see, are at the same level. Then we can continue reading the array provided by uh, the example. So we have the number 1 here. So we increment its counter by 1. Then we have number 4 twice. Again, we increment the counter of number 4, and that's it. We have read all the uh, elements of the array and we have our uh, final values for the counters of these elements. The function should return the levels of the counters of all the elements. For example, here number one should be three, then for number two it should be two and so on. So we have an array of numbers to be returned by our function as a result. Start thinking about a solution, we can start by a brute approach. So uh, this is the way it's written in C++. Um, we have our function solution. It takes the number n and the array, which is provided by the problem usually. Then you have to return as a result an array of counters of all of the numbers. So we're going to start by defining an integer variable maximum counter, which is equal to zero, just to look for the maximum value the counters has reached. And then I will be iterating uh, using a for loop over all the elements of the array A. We have to test for every element if it's inside the uh, allowed range, meaning if it's below or equal to the number n. If it's not, it's outside of our range and we have different operation to apply. But if it is the case, if AI is less or equal than n, I would increment the counter R, which is my result a vector here, so the value r ai minus 1 by uh, 1. So why am I putting minus 1 here? Because the values of the array a are included uh, between 1 and something, and in order to fit these as indexes, they should be starting at 0. Then I'm going to test if my maximum value is less than the counter value, and if it is the case, I'll replace its value by uh, the maximum value of the counter that we have just read. So this way I'm going through all the elements of array A and in case these elements are in the allowed range I will increment the uh, corresponding counter for the uh, element and I'm gonna keep the maximum value of the counter stored somewhere in my variable max C. Now if the element AI is not in the range, is not less or equal than N, I have to max out all the counters of all the uh, the elements of the array. In this case, I could use simply the fill function, and I'm going to fill the results vector from the beginning until the end by the value of the maximum counter. And basically that's it. We keep looping and iterating over all the, uh, the elements of array A until it's finished, and then we return the uh, vector R as a result. And it works perfectly fine. As we can see here, it will give us a correctness score of 100%. However, over, uh, overall, the total score is 77%. And this is because the performance score is not enough. 
it's around 60%. And if we go down, we see that all the tests are good. However, we have a timeout error at some point. And this is completely normal because uh, if you look at our brute solution, this is our brute approach. We are visiting all the elements of array A, but every time we are seeing a number that is uh, higher than N, which is here, we are trying to fill all the elements of uh, the results vector R by one value, max C, which means we have to revisit all the elements of uh, the vector R every time we encounter a value of A that is higher than N. A more efficient solution starts by considering an additional variable B that is equal to the maximum counter value that we will be modifying later on. And for each value from the array A, we will increment the counter using the following expression, where the counter will be equal to the maximum value between B and the counter itself, plus one. So in other words, the base of my increment will always be the variable B. For example, here we start with the number three, the maximum value between its counter, which is uh, zero at this point, and the variable b, which is also zero. So this expression here will give us zero plus one. So the counter of number three will be equal to one. Then we continue the same thing for uh, the number four. We encountered this twice. We're gonna increment it twice. We have a counter that is equal to two at this stage. So the maximum value at this stage is equal to two, meaning the maximum value for the counters between the counters is equal to two. And here's where the things will change. When I will be seeing a number that is higher than my maximum value, which is n equal five. So six is higher than five. So this is out of the boundaries. And at this stage, we're gonna change the value of B. We're going to put it equal to two, which is the maximum value of the counter. And we continue using this expression. So the number one is equal to the maximum between the value B equal to two and the counter of the number one, which is equal to zero. So this expression here will be uh, giving me the value equal to plus one. So overall, the counter of the number one will be equal to three. And this is where we uh, can mark it on the graph. Then for the number four, we can add two. And this is our final results for now. Notice here that some of the numbers were not visited simply because they were not included in the example. Uh, I mean, in the array A. So uh, their counters in the results vector will be equal to zero, like the number two here and the number five. For this reason, we can iterate over all the elements of the counters meaning our results vector, let's call it R, for example. And for each value of these counters, if it is less than the value of B, then I'm gonna increment it so it will match the value of B. So this is our more efficient solution. So why is it more efficient than the brute approach? Simply because we are visiting each element of the array A only once and each element of the counter vector also once. So now let's go and see how we can write this in C++ and in Python. The solution in C++ looks like uh, the following. We have, this is our function's name, and then you have the value of n, the maximum value, then the, uh, the vector, the array a, and in return you will have to provide uh, a vector of the results of the counters. So I will be defining at first, uh, the R vector, which is the results vector of size N, and we're going to fill it all with zeros for the moment. Then I will define two integers. One is M equal to zero, which will be holding the maximum value for the highest current counter. Another one is the value of B that we have just explained in the algorithm. So then I will iterate over all the elements of array A. And if the element is lower or equal than n, the maximum allowed value, in this case, I will um, use the expression that we have just explained. The counter of this element will be equal to the maximum value between b and the current counter plus one. Then I'm going to test if m is equal, meaning the maximum counter is less than the, uh, the current counter. If it is, the case, then I'm going to replace the value of M by uh, the current count. This is a way to do uh, a maximum value. I could have wrote this in a different way. 
we could write this uh, like this. M is equal to the maximum between M and RAI minus 1. This also works fine and it looks more more elegant. So this is in case the value of AI, the element AI, is less or equal than N. Uh, otherwise, we have an else condition here. We're going to change the value of B so it matches the maximum value of the counters. So else B equal to M, and that's it. So this iteration here is going to loop over all the array A and do what we have just explained in the algorithm section. So at the end, as we have said, at the end of my program, we have the problem of the elements that were not visited, which counter will be equal to zero, and this is wrong. So we have to iterate over our results vector one more time, just to make sure that all the elements have at least the value of B. So all the counters shouldn't be less than B, and if it is the case, if Ri is less than B, we will be putting Ri equal to B. And that's it. So you return R at the end, and this is a very efficient solution. It would give you 100% correctness and 100% performance. In Python, it's not that different. We uh, define our solution function. You have N and A. A is a list. N is the maximum number, the maximum range. And then we're going to start by defining the results list, which is basically an empty list. It has only zero values with a size equal to N. Then our two variables, the maximum equal to zero, and then the variable B, which is equal to zero for the moment. Then I'm going to iterate over all the elements of A. And for each element, I will test if this element is less or equal than N. I'm going to increment its counter uh, over the maximum value between B and the current value of the counter plus one. And then I will be uh, replacing the M value by the maximum value of the current uh, counter. If the value of the element AI is higher than N, in this case I will change the value of B and it will be equal to the maximum counter. And uh, when this is done, when I have iterated over all the elements of array A, uh, in this case I can iterate one time over the uh, results vector, the results list, and if any of the elements is less than the value of B, I'm going to reset its value to B. And uh, that's it. Basically, at the end, we return R, what we can see here. Uh, it is good from the performance point of view, and the correctness is also 100%. So overall, you get 100% score. And I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any remarks or questions or anything, any specific stuff you would like me to discuss, please drop a comment below. Thank you for staying that long, and good luck to you.